I would now like to introduce you to two fabulous poets from the world of disability arts who are just releasing a new publication called Winter Rhymes, spelled R-I-M-E-S, and Richard is holding up a copy just right now. Um, so first of all, without further ado, I'm going to start with uh, Richard Downs. So Richard, can you tell us a bit about yourself and the uh, poetry book? Yeah, um, right, so I'm Richard, I'm a socially engaged activist, poet, right, associate artist with Disability Arts Online. Um, this poetry collection started when Wendy, who is a close friend of mine, kind of emailed me and said, let's put together a collection. It's about snow. Right, and I said, I can't do that. I don't have enough poems about snow, but I can put one together about winter. Right, so Wendy and I worked really closely together in order to do this. And to my way of thinking, it's an amazing collection because whilst it's about winter, it's about a lot of other things. It's about your home, is about um, hurt in hurt in relationships, and about kind of different adventures we had in winter at kind of different times in our lives. Oh, that sounds really fascinating. Um, so, I'm going to turn to you now, Wendy. Um, so, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh yeah, nice to meet you. Thanks for having us on. Um, well, really, I, I, it was a suggestion, but Richard's a real go-getter. Uh, he just gets things done. And um, so I thought, oh, have I got enough poems? And he was absolutely right to, to turn it into winter and, and the brilliant title that he came up with for the pamphlet. So I gathered together some of mine. Yeah, it's nice to sort of get get them published when they're sat on a memory stick, you know. Well, that's it, really. Um, coming back to you, Richard, um, just sort of how long did it take you to get your poems that you wanted to put together um, with Wendy's? Right, well, coincidentally, I had been um, working at home poetry about winter. Um, right, and so my poems already existed, and all I did was send everything I have to Wendy, right, and say, matching. Right, Wendy is such a strong and gifted poet that she was able to, right, and so she already had a start. Right, and so it was quite easy to kind of have a collection and we didn't even have to decide what went in because everything went in. <laughs> Wendy, I guess really kind of similar question to yourself. I mean, um, you know, once you'd got all these poems, how did you decide what you weren't going to put in if you didn't put anything in, um, you know, and, and how, you know, yeah, and how you ordered them? Well, Richard sent me his and I aligned them up um, I looked at stuff and I probably twiddled with a couple and added winter. So I did try to match them up with Richard. There's a sort of a similarity in the stories behind them. Um, let's hear some of those poems. Yeah, this one is called A Hundred Strokes and it's about the last time uh, I sat down with my mother. She asked me, oh, you brush your hair a hundred times, don't you? I said, oh, well, I don't know, because I, I was a bit irritable. And it's sort of an apology. A hundred strokes. Last time with mum, it was winter, 90. She said she brushed her hair a hundred times a day. That's what you're supposed to do, isn't it? I being ungirly snapped, how do I know? Now I picture her alone, brushing her lovely hair, brushing her pride, a stroke for each memory. 
like a stroke of a whip, a hundred strokes of punishment, a stroke for her son long dead, a stroke for her daughters long lost, a stroke for her only friend, her dog, a stroke for her past, a stroke for her guilt, a stroke for her mother, a stroke for him, Jim. When she threw his blue and white spotty snotty hanky left in the basin, he pulled her hair and she, like a bull being lampooned in a ring, fought to get away. From his one fisted anger of strength, pulling at her hair with the gurning face of a devil, vice like grip, a trip of sadism in his psychotic eyes. I am ashamed that I thought it wasn't so bad compared to everything else. But now I want to beat my head with my fists to appease, to atone. Her humiliation, her screams. Jenny, who in service had eaten with gentry. Wildhood. I am turned on by sheet lightning, the heavy weather of my own hammer horror, hugging a lover, frightening myself for a strike, as some are struck by fists. My monster walks, runs, rains faster, alley, alley, aster, water running in a gutter. I could have been a Nordic ice spirit. Lightning turns me on to trouble, into Keats, Hubble, Bubble. Thank you, Wendy. Absolutely gorgeous poetry and very Thank moving. You. Thank you. And Richard, to you, please, uh, Sam, if you could introduce your, each poem. The first poem I've chosen that kind of follows 100 strokes in which rhyme is called Charles Henry's Children. And it's largely about my dad and my brother and my sister. Uh, my dad died during an historical time called the Winter of Discontent. Charles Henry's children, they dig, these grave diggers, chipping at frozen ground in winter of discontentment. They dig at soil awaiting you, your body's internment. Know that your life is all used up, wasted sugar in cups of tea and woodbine cigarettes rotting your heart from the inside. Brave heart, Henry in a desert, dodging Rommel's great tanks, biting sand and gritting teeth, head down. Later, a married man with three children, wanting turns on your knobbly knee, riding that long black earth, just a few miles up our road to a church filled of young ones' tears, failing, dying, each in turn, first a thrifty sister, brothers of lived separation, parted, festive, this season ain't, dark nights, clouding Christmas, more than crackers at dinner time, madness, stuffing, no sage turkeys, these distant survivors of Charles Henry's broken bloodline, alive, alive and not merry, no to happy new years, maybe to this resolution, yes, yes. <laughs> 